Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Lions. We saw two of the best hitters in the game last night. Michael Brantley had two hits for the Indians, and league-leading hitter Jose Altuve had three for the Astros. Tonight, we'll see one of the game's best on the mound, Corey Kluber, having a historic season for the Tribe. And we'll even see one wacky mascot for Houston. What will we see tonight? Find out next on Sports Time Ohio. From Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, it's Cleveland Indians baseball tonight. Game two of a four-game series between the Tribe and the Houston Astros. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Tribe will send Corey Kluber to the mound tonight. And Corey Kluber is in the midst of an incredible season for the Tribe. He needs 16 strikeouts. He's got three more starts left, including tonight, to move into the top ten in Indian single-season strikeouts with Bob Feller holding that number 10 spot at 246. Well, he has been so much fun to watch all year long. He's so aggressive. He goes out, he pounds the strike zone. 18 times he has eight strikeouts uh, or more, and he just continues to go out there. He doesn't like to walk, guys. He's been very aggressive. He's in the Cy Young uh, voting. I guarantee he's going to garner a, a lot of votes, but you can see fifth and uh, tied for fifth and wins, fourth and ERA, innings pitched. He has just been so much fun to watch. 230 strikeouts. That's the most since 73 in Gaylord Perry. So you're going back a ways to look at some of the greats. We know he's got a tremendous fastball. He's got an excellent cutter. And that slider has been his put-away pitch this year. But how does he throw those pitches? Well, come on back. Katie Witham visits with Corey Kluber to let us in on the secret. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Paninis. Get overstuffed at Panini's Bar and Grill. 
and by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. All right, back here in Houston at Minute Maid Park, getting ready for game two of our four-game series between Cleveland and Houston. And Corey Kluber looking for his 16th win of the season. Already a career-high 231 strikeouts in his 31 starts this year. He's getting loose in the bullpen. Let's go downstairs to Katie with him, who caught up with Corey recently and has the inside scoop on how he struck all those batters out this year. Well, it's been that breaking ball, Matt. When you look at some of the numbers, that breaking ball for Corey Kluber ranks fourth best in all of baseball among starters, both this year and last year. Now, it looks like a fastball coming out of his hands, but the speed and the break is what makes it exceptional. Corey Kluber earlier showed me exactly how he throws that breaking ball in our Here Right Audiology down to the game. Some guys will like, you know, they get to there and then they'll try to turn it to do it or whatever. Yeah. I just, I kind of, if, that, if that's my fastball, the breaking ball is just kind of, I get on the side of it a little bit and pull down a little bit harder. And that's, you know, whatever the difference is from there to there is what makes it from a fastball or a breaking ball. Interesting, and that, that fastball he was showing us, that was a two-seam two seam grip. Yes, it was, but you know what? It's not that much of a, a change in his finger grip, but, boy, this is a break just oh. unbelievably late and sharp, and it goes down. It's one of the toughest sliders to hit in, in the league, without a doubt. He throws the cutter as well, which it moves so well. But his four-seamer, uh, the two-seam fastball, that uh, he lets start at the hip to come back, and then that breaking ball, it's devastating. But he can control everything he throws, and that's what makes him so fun. And it's devastating because his ability to use that four-seam fastball to dot, get ahead, right. and then put you away. And then he expands his zone because he's, he's ahead in the count. 0-2-1-2. Oh, two, two. All right, it's Corey Kluber going for win 16, trying to stop an Indians four-game losing streak. The play-by-play -play is coming up next. Your Northern Ohio Honda dealers by the Cleveland Clinic. Call today for an appointment today and by the Northeast Ohio Ford dealers. And welcome in to the Astrodome where we are ready for baseball now. Nick Tropiano and the Houston Astros have taken the field. 
And let's have a look at the starting lineup for Cleveland. It's brought to you by Progressive. Michael Bourne leading it off, followed by Jose Ramirez. Michael Brantley batting third. Then it's Carlos Santana, Jason Kipnis, and Lonnie Chisholm. Jan Gomes, Jason Giambi, and David Murphy batting ninth. Our GMC starting pitcher of the game, Nick Tropiano. He is making his second major league start. His last one came against the Seattle Mariners. He was a, like a five and fly guy. He went five innings, four hits, two runs. He ended up beating the Mariners, though. And Asashi Iwakuma was the pitcher that he beat. First time he's faced the Indians. This guy, nothing overpowering. He's got a fastball, a, a little slider, the changeup as well. I think the key is, is he going to be able to pitch the left-handers of the Cleveland Indians inside, or will they be able to cut the plate in half and look away? They say, from our scouting report, he has a tough time pitching lefties in. We'll see that tonight. Let's uh, check out the key of defense behind him this evening. It looks like this. Grossman is in left field. Fowler is in center. Presley in right. Petit is at third. Gonzalez at short. Altuve at second. Singleton at first. Stasi behind the plate. Umpiring crew. Angel Hernandez calling the balls and strikes. Paul Nart at first. Victor Paza at second. Larry Vanover, your crew chief, down at third. Jeff says that I said, Welcome to the Astrodome when we came on the <laughs> air. I'm, I'm stuck in a time warp. Well, it's a dome. You're, you're right. <laughs> well, the uh, Indians' road woes continue here at Minute Maid Park tonight. They haven't won on the road trip. They haven't won all year on the road. 31 and 43. The Indians' record on the road this year. Look at that, though. 35 hits in the four games and 14 coming with two out and nobody on. Which that all seven of them last night. They were that way. So they're going to have to try and get something started early. Get Kluber a lead like they did in his last start, and he was able to cruise in that ball game. Michael Bourne leading off for Cleveland and the pitch is up and away for ball one. Pitch outside. Now quickly two and oh for Michael Bourne the former Astro went one for four last night with a run scored. It came in the first it was the only run of the night for Cleveland. To left field, coming in hard. Robbie Grossman can't get there. Drops for a base hit, and the Indians had their leadoff man aboard. Well, he had a 2 0 count, and there's a pitch down and in a little bit. But he flares it the other way, keeps it fair, starts it off with a base hit. So we're breaking the string. They're going to get a man on first without two outs. How about that? Different way of going about business. Here's Jose Ramirez 0 for 3 last night. And taking a called strike. Last night, Bourne reached on the air and went to second base on the on that play. And then Ramirez laid down a sacrifice bunt to get Bourne to third base. And Jose fooled that time out in front, way out in front. It's 0 and 2. Way off the mark. One ball, two strikes. Tropiano looked back at the pitching rub around. He delivered that ball. Maybe lost his toe hold. The one, two. A little bit low. Well, he was able to lay off that changeup. Hey, make a pitch right here. Throw the punch. Here we go. And Ramirez is swinging a foul tip held on to by Stasi one away. Our great clip of the game from last night. Michael Brantley with two more hits. Raising his batting average up to 322. One of those hits was a double his 40th on the year. And Brantley continuing to Put his name right up there 
among the best in the American League this year. He's fifth in batting average. And 40 doubles have him tied for third in that category. Well, we talked about Altuve having another multi hit game 63. Well, Michael Brantley got his 53rd yesterday as well. Well, those two guys, I'll tell you what, those hit machines. One and two in the league and hits. Yeah, Altuve with 209, Brantley second with 182. That's quite a gap. I want to see Michael get to 200 hits. That's a huge milestone, I think, when you're a hitter. If you can get to 200 hits, it shows your consistency. You're playing every day. You rarely have slumps. And this guy has had hitting streaks, uh, what, about nine times of six or more? He has been so solid. Just off the outside corner. Man, it's two and one. Michael currently with a six game hitting streak. And he's gone 11 for 22. Hits it in the hole with the shortstop running towards second base. And Bourne goes all the way to third. Well done. And I'll tell you the shortstop Gonzalez gave way he gave ground at short and Brantley just slapped it the other way. He was trying to decoy uh, Michael Bourne but he peeked back he knew where the ball was and he was able to get all the way to third base so uh, job well done by Brantley. Hitting the hole that was vacated first and third now with one out. Last night it was Carlos Santana that drove in the Indians only run with a two out RBI hit in the first. Santana has hit in three consecutive games. But he uh, more importantly for a guy batting in the middle of the lineup he has 19 runs batted in. In his last 18 games played. Astro shift three to the right side. Santana takes low and inside ball one. They keep the third baseman Petit over there with Bourne. Everybody else over on the right side. Out of play. And the count even to one on one. Get back with a dive. Nick Tropiano was a fifth round pick of the Astros back in June of 2011. New York native. Pitched at Stony Brook University in New York. Deep and fouled on the right side, out in front of it. Change up, he leaves uh, up in the zone. He better get that change up down. He's not overpowering and so far the slider seems like it goes straight down. But you haven't seen many pitches inside to the left handers. Hit the first and it gets by Singleton out too big with a diving stop. And the pitcher Tropiano gets over to cover. So Santana is retired for out number two but he picks up RBI number 81. And the Indians for the second night in a row score in the first inning. I gotta tell you, Altuve made a play last night on Chisholm Hall diving out to the infield. This one is going the other way. So he showed has shown us range going to his right, going to his left. This guy may not be very tall in stature, but I'll tell you what, he can play the game of baseball. That's a nice play. That's where the shift takes the hit away from Santana because normally without the shift on, Altuve is probably another step or two towards second base and he can't get there to make that play. That is correct. Jason Kipnis last night one for four. One hit. Come on now. One hit.
Kitten is once again batting in the five hole. Where he's batted 269. And this is his 31st game in that number five spot. Swing and a miss, one and two to kill. Nick Tropiano just a couple of weeks ago turned 24 years old. Birthday on August the 27th. Singleton has it, slips, flips, and the inning is over. But the Indians get on the board first. A couple of hits and an RBI ground out, one nothing try. Astros coming to bat. For the Houston Astros, here's his starting lineup tonight brought to you by Toyota. Robbie Grossman, Jose Altuve, and Dexter Fowler at the top. Then it's Chris Carter, Marwin Gonzalez, and John Singleton. Max Stasi, Alex Presley, and Gregorio Petit. GMC starting pitcher Corey Clover making his 32nd start this year. He is 15 and 9, has two consecutive wins, both of them very good ball games against the White Sox, complete game. And uh, coming against Minnesota, eight and a third innings. If you remember back last year, he came in. Uh, Corey did. He's two and zero oh in his career against uh, Houston, but he came in here in one ball game and pitched four innings and two hits and ended up going into the rotation. Came in out of the bullpen here for Scott Kazmir. Corey Kluber into the wide, and the first pitch to Grossman is up and away for ball one. Grossman last night, one for four with a double and a run scored. And it's out of play. Now the one one. A little bit high. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, if you think back to last year, Corey Kluber did not make the Indians team coming out of spring training. But in the everything happens for a reason category, Brett Myers went on the DL, essentially never to return, and that precipitated right. Corey Kluber's emergence as one of the game's really bright stars. The 3 1 pitch. And Kluber for one of That's the a rarity. times this year walks the first batter of the game. Let's check the Kia Indians defense behind Kluber this evening. It'll be Brantley in left, Bourne in center, Murphy in right, Chisholm Hall at third, Ramirez at short, Kipnis at second, Santana at first, with Gomes catching.
That free pass, the first walk of the series. And the Astros have their leadoff man aboard for Jose Altuve. Three hits last night, including a triple, leaving him one hit shy of the Astros franchise record set by Craig Biggio. Chopped to third. Chisholm goes to second. There's one on the first. Not in time. Altuve able to beat it out. Well, this guy, he goes up and he swings. You've got to pick up. Does he ever? Hey, he's a very aggressive. He did that last night. The first two times up, he swung the bat at the first two pitches he saw. Nolan Ryan, now a uh, member of this Houston Astros front office and a high ranking official in the organization after so many years with the Rangers, and he's sitting with Craig Biggio. He's an assistant to the GM here. And I, I would think uh, this next year will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. He didn't miss by much. Nolan Ryan's title, Rick, is executive advisor. And of course, uh, Nolan had uh, stints with both the uh, Houston Astros and the Texas Rangers as a pitcher. So I guess it. Only makes sense that he's worked with both clubs in their front office as well. Yeah, keeping an eye on that guy. He can steal a bag. He has 52 on the year. He was thrown out last night trying to steal by Jan Gomes. We're only the eighth time. You know, I don't know if it's. Simply a case of knowing the pitchers, knowing the catchers, getting a better read on things, or it's the fact that he's been on base more. He never had more than 35 stolen bases in a year. And as now many he's times, over 50. yeah, but as many times he's been on base, he's, he has had opportunities. You know, you look at his numbers 42 doubles, and when he hits the base hit, you get to know your pitchers too. I'm sure a lot of those stolen bases are, are probably in the, the Western Division. Dexter Fowler swinging a miss, one and two to count. Nice cutter there. Down and in. This is the cutter. It's not his breaking ball. It's it's a cut fastball. Still has very good movement though. Fouled right back. Even though the pitches, when you look at them from the center field camera, they look like they might have similar movement. They're really completely different in terms of the, the way the pitcher delivers them. A cut fastball is thrown just like a fastball with instead of a, a full extension at the end, he just literally cuts off the delivery, which thus the, the term cutter. Whereas that slider, he's got more of that he's pulling down on the ball. Like a breaking ball or a curveball. And you get more tilt. Deception, depth to it, whatever you want it, whatever word you want to yeah. use. You know, whether it's a curveball or a slider, everybody calls their pitch differently, but it's his breaking ball, the one that breaks the most. Did you find that almost everybody, every pitcher you faced, their breaking ball were, was maybe a little bit different. It's not like it, it all didn't break exactly. No, the same, everyone. Did they? I mean, but you had guys that would throw more curveballs, like a Burp Lie 11 curveball, and a then you guys rope. had like a slider, like a Dave Steed slider. I mean, that one was about as hard as you could get. That's probably one of the better ones around. Lie 11s was one of the better curveballs around. Don't see a lot of the, the big overhand curves anymore. Jim Palmer though. used to have the old overhand curveball, and he would throw the high fastball by, and then the dead fish change up down and away. Colin McHugh had a good breaking ball last he night. He had a an old-fashioned curveball. Yes, ball. he did. That was a very good pitch for him. Swing and a miss. Fowler strikes out. Number 231 on the year for Corey Kluber, and there are two down in the first inning. There you go. There's another cutter. He got him twice. There's the fastball grip, which is a two seam. 
fastball grip. Now that's the breaking ball that he calls. It's just off his his right uh, index finger is on the middle part or the leather of the ball, and he puts that middle finger more on the seam to create a little spin to it. And instead of keeping his hand over top of the baseball, he cocks it off to the side so he can pull straight down, like your as Bob Feller used to say, like you're pulling down the window shade. And that's kind of the old analogy. Young kids doing it. Are there window shades left anymore? No, <laughs> I, don't I don't think, think those so. things exist anymore. <laughs> well, there are some in some houses. <laughs> but I guarantee the kids aren't pulling them down. No. <laughs> They're automatic. Push a button that goes down. One and one to count on Chris Carter with two down in the first inning. Carter last night 0 for 4. Big bat though, 36 home runs, 20 doubles. Altuve's running. Carter's swinging. Base hit left field. Altuve stops at second. And so we've got a little bit of everything here in the Astros half of the first. A walk, a hit, strikeout. And now there are two on with two outs. Well, with Altuve running, that cutter sort of stayed, was flattened out a little bit. And this is a big strong man at the plate. If you see Carter, he can hit it hard. And that ball just gets shoots through the infield. He's so big and strong, gets it past Ramirez. So they will have runners at first and second now with two outs. Marwin Gonzalez did not play last night. Switch hitting shortstop. Bat at 268 on the year. And it's down low, ball one. This is the guy, the switch hitter that back in Cleveland we were talking about. From the left side of the plate, you see where his hands are, and he hit that home run, remember, in Cleveland? And then right-handed, his, his hands are total opposite. They're up above his shoulders. So it's a totally different style that this yeah. guy hits from, from both sides of the plate. And we realized how quick he was. You'd say, how can his hands be that quick? But by the time he gets ready, they get to a hitting position. Yeah, we saw him pull those hands in quickly. Yeah. And rope one to right field. He sure did. One nothing Cleveland. Bottom of the first, two on, two out for Houston. The base hit in the right field. Altuve around third. He will score, and we are tied in one. Marwin Gonzalez RBI number 23 on the year. And back to back two out hits in the inning for the Astros. Well there you see he gets it. Uh, he gets it to that hitting area. In a hurry he's able to find the hole between first and second. And with Altuve at second base the way he can run he's going to score easily. No play for Murphy. So back come the Astros and tie this ball game up. And with two on and two out, the batter is going to be John Singleton. Left handed hitter with power and a lot of potential. Singleton did get a Pinch hit appearance late in the game last night. But Tom Wallace said after sitting out a couple of games, he was planning on putting Singleton back in the lineup tonight. He's in a six for 56 slump in his past 20 games. 
Yeah, they just feel he's trying too hard. Manager has met with him to say, hey, look, we know you can hit. You're not going anywhere. Just try to relax and be yourself. You're capable of hitting the baseball. We buy it. He has tremendous power, but he's just one of those guys sometimes that maybe you're just trying a little bit too hard. Big chopper foul first base side. You're not just trying to hit the baseball hard, you're trying to hit it 500 feet. Not just a hard line drive. I thought this was kind of a telling comment from Tom Wallace about John Singleton. He said, quote, maybe he doesn't feel like he belongs here. It takes a while sometimes for people to believe they belong in the big leagues. We know that. We've talked to players. Pitchers. Everybody, every personality is different that comes here. And sometimes, you know, it takes a little while to fit in. I don't care if you're with your teammates or just. It, everybody is different. Well, I know before the game, he was standing around the batting code cage, soaking up everything Craig Biggio had to offer. Well, why wouldn't he? Two on, two out. And a 2 2 count for Singleton. As Kluber tries to get out of a jam here in the first frame. Yeah, this is, uh, well, we knew it was strange when he walked the first hitter of the ball game because we never see that. You remember uh, Singleton hit a home run in Cleveland down the left field line. It, it, so yeah. it goes to show you the kind of power he has. And I'm, I guarantee what B, uh, Biggio was talking to him about is using that part of the field, especially the short porch in his home ballpark here. He's strong enough to hit him out of anywhere. Got him looking. Kluber strikes out a pair, but the Astros get a pair of hits, including a run. And we're tied at one after one in Houston. at Auto Mile by Levin Mattress, located in all Levin furniture and freestanding locations. And by Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. One, one, as we go to the second. How about that? The Kent State alumni of H-Town are in the house. All right. That might be Murph's Kent graduating State class. Alumni, I, I, right I think uh, president of that uh, class is Jim Murphy. <laughs> Just... 
Lonnie Chisinau, one for four last night, leading it off. Lifts this one high and foul out of play. Again, out of play to the left. Hammered foul. Look out. This one went the other way as he got out in front of it. And he hit it hard. Now the one two and that's off the plate. Count even up. And low and dirt full count. Jan Gomes waiting on deck then Jason Giambi here in the second for Cleveland. Adam the chase, second strikeout for Tropiano. One down here in inning number two. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Base runners earlier in the inning, instead of like last night where everybody got yeah. on with two outs. They did it in the first and they scored. And contain Altuve. Jan Gomes 0 for 4 last night. And a breaking ball in for a strike. Pulled his hands in, gulped it high in the air to left field, but not deep enough to get out of here as Grossman camps under it. Two down. Hey, don't forget to tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have one of your pictures shown during our telecast courtesy of AT&T and coming up later in the game we'll have our AT&T fan photo. Jason Giambi in the DH spot batting eight tonight. He takes a strike. One and one to count. Bounced in front of the plate. Baltimore can clinch the AL East with a win tonight. They lead the Toronto Blue Jays 4 to 2. They're in the sixth inning. Nationals can do the same in the NL East. They're scoreless with Atlanta. Giambi hammers it foul on the right side. Nationals brave scoreless through five. Back. Atlanta in a similar position that the Indians are in. They picked a bad time to have a losing streak. Braves have fallen four and a half out on the wild card races. They've dropped four straight. 
2 2 pitch. It's in the dirt, the full count. Dodgers grab all the headlines in the National League, but Washington is not going to be any fun no, for anybody that draws them in the playoffs. You're right. They're getting their bullpen set up. Yavi draws a walk with two outs here in the inning. They've just got they've got very good starting pitching. I don't know much about their bullpen. Their bullpen, well, Soriano's out. He's no longer closing for him, so I don't know what role he's going to play in that bullpen. But they have plenty of arms that they can yeah. come out of there with. Pretty good fundamentally. They've got got some good hitters up and down that lineup. Some pop. Yeah, they got an interesting ball club. Murphy flares one toward left. Grossman makes the kick. We'll head to the bottom of the second. Tied at one in Houston. Stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Tory Kluber and starts following an Indians loss. Dynamite. Eight wins, three losses, ERA 1.90. That's the guy, you know, the ace is your stopper in your starting rotation. Yeah. When you have a losing streak, he's the guy you want out there to stop things and get it turned the other way. Yeah, he's just, every game he's been out there, you, you expect to win, and that's... That's a nice attitude to have when you have a guy on the mound that you can go out there and say hey we expect to win when this guy's on the mound and it, it, it hasn't ended with him so far in the second half. There's been a couple of guys that go out there Carrasco another guy that you know when he has been in this group you expect to win when he takes the mound. Now there's Carlos Carrasco who has been a very pleasant surprise with how he's turned his season around. He's been he's been like a different person. He's put himself in position to be a valuable member of the starting rotation now. This kid uh, and he throws a ball. We'll get a chance to see him tomorrow. I can't wait. I, I love watching him pitch now because he's throwing 97 98 in the yeah. first inning. He has a nice slider. He's got a good changeup. 
And I mean, he can dominate lineups if he's throwing strikes and he's on his game. Chased one up high. Stasi strikes out three Ks for Kluber. One down here in the second. With more on Corey Kluber, let's get on to Katie. Well, Matt, Chris Antonetti is here in Houston, addressed the media earlier today, and he said with the season that Corey Kluber has had, he should absolutely be considered and a candidate for the Cy Young. He went on to say he may not have that household name, but he's pitched just as good, if not better, than some of those household names this season. Well, I, I would agree because we watched every one of his starts. I wonder if there's been any talk about a potential contract extension for Corey Kluber. That I don't know. Out of play to the left. You know, you don't worry about that like during the year, but I, if I was the Indians, I certainly would think about it. This guy is uh, he's been come out of nowhere. We thought we knew he was going to be good last year and he had a great second half. If you remember he hurt his finger. Had to miss some time, but it's a month pitch great yeah. down the stretch. He missed basically all of August last year. Well, well you and I saw him. We saw his very first starts. We saw his first, you know, the first uh, in Kansas City handful of games he pitched, and then he got into the rotation. And I may think he made 12 starts in 2012. I didn't see any of this. Well, we saw a guy that competed and who didn't give in. No, but you saw a guy that, you know, kept working at his craft and I think finally believed that he belonged as we were talking about that in the first inning yeah. about guys that staying at the big league level. Well, I think a lot can be said for that, you know, for Corey Kluber, for Carlos Carrasco. You, you maybe somewhere along the line something clicks. You turn a proverbial corner and all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I am good enough. I can believe in yourself. Get this done. And yeah. Well, the, the work ethic, and, and, and that's what everybody attributes Corey's success to is just the, the way he goes about his business. Hey, he's a competitor. His attitude doesn't show it. You would never think him, uh, think about him like that. But that inner drive that this guy has is something very special. Scouts will, will usually tell you guys who have electric stuff guys who have fastballs like Corey Kluber and like Carlos Carrasco. They tend to just kind of blow through the minor leagues and, and they all say. That you don't know how they're going to react. Once they get hit around. That is the separator because some guys. Oh my goodness. All of a sudden now they start pitching away from contact. Yeah. And it gets yeah. them away from what made them great. Some guys will adjust back and be okay. Some guys don't and never make it. And some it takes a little while longer. Corey Kluber goes one, two, three here in the second inning. He has now struck out four, and he only used ten pitches to glide through the second.
Popular way to follow the September pennant races is with MLB.com at bat. It's the number one app for live baseball. You enjoy live look ins, replay review, scores, live radio broadcasts, the MLB TV game of the day, and more. Get at bat for your smartphone or tablet on the App Store, or you can visit MLB.com. Top of the order, Michael Bourne singled and scored. The Tribes run on the first, takes a strike. Skipped one in there, one and one. Brantley drives one, or Bourne drives one to deep right center field. And it's Presley who makes the catch in the alley for out number one. They're saying that's where Brantley hit his ball yesterday and <laughs> went for a double. Yeah, it hit the track and short hopped the wall, but I thought Bourne hit this ball pretty well, but they were able to chase it down. Hung up there for a while. It didn't get to the warning track. I guess he had more of an uppercut swing where Brantley had just enough top a spin to air it underneath it. Here's Jose Ramirez struck out his first time up. Nick Tropiano in his previous two years struck out more batters than any other minor leaguer in the Astros organization. Well, he was in double A last year and triple A this year. If you look at his numbers 9 and 5, a 303 ARA, and 124 and two thirds innings. 90 hits. 120 strikeouts. Well, coming into this season, his career ERA was 334 and 345 career minor league innings. Pop towards shallow left, but Grossman is there, two down. Right now on FoxSportsOhio.com, see where the Indians place in this week's power rankings. Get a sneak peek of Whitner revealed before it airs Friday night, and check out how some young Blue Jackets prospects are making an impression. Get complete coverage of all today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. Michael Brantley with a base hit. His first time up to extend that hitting streak to seven games. 12 hits in his last 23 at bats. But that's nothing really when you consider that in his last 19 games, he now has 31 hits and 72 at bats, and that's well over 400. Rip foul on the right side. The numbers for Brantley in this current tear that he's on. Lays off a ball in the dirt. Two and two.
See the Astros shifting three on the right side for Brantley. They did this last night, and Brantley singled the left. This two side, full count. I guess it's one of those things where the shift is look. They figure based on their numbers he hits more ground balls through the right side. Right. Brantley has hits to the opposite field but they're usually line drives to left. There isn't a lot of ground balls to the other side of the infield. Well, so he did his first at bat but you're right for the most part he's going to pull it. I can see what they're doing that's what they're telling you pulling it on the ground and you hit it the other way in the air like that. That's exactly what you were talking about. Hit it hard but right at Grossman. Indians go one two three. We'll go to the bottom of the third tied at one. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Bottom of the third, top of the order for Houston. It'll be Robbie Grossman, Jose Altuve, and Dexter Fowler for the Astros. Grossman drew a walk his first time up. Hits are even at two apiece. Both of the Astros hits came consecutively with two outs in the first inning, leading to their only run. Bluber has set down four in a row. Three of the four by strikeout as Grossman cuts and misses. in for a strike. Perhaps Rick the first inning. A leadoff walk back to back hits with two outs. Things we don't normally see from Kluber. But things that we do normally see to good pitchers. Early in a game if you're going to get to them. The first inning is usually the time and maybe that was the case simply. More than anything else for Kluber in that first inning. Yeah. That's true. They're not able to settle in. There's a good uh, slider right there. That's number five for Kluber. And now he moves up past Gaylord Perry in 1972 from 234. Now Corey Kluber 235 and on the move. And that's significant he because in 1972 Gaylord Perry won the Cy Young Award. Uh huh. He could end up there right behind Bob Feller tonight if he has a good night. If he has a great night. He could. Jump that already with five. I told you 18 times he has uh, eight or more strikeouts. That was only the second ball in the last 16 pitches for Corey Kluber. He's 14 strikes. Safe to say he's locking it in. Yeah. 
after a little bit of a rocky start. Two down. Well, come on out and join the tribe on September 27th for Fan Appreciation Night out at Progressive Field. The tribe will take on the race. You can enjoy dollar dogs, fireworks, other fan appreciation activities throughout the game. Just go to uh, Indians.com for your tickets. Dexter Fowler struck out his first time up. Yeah, Dexter Fowler to me when I look at him at the plate he looks like Alexei Ramirez from the other side of the plate. I mean there's all left nothing handed to hitter. him. Look how yeah. just he's a thin long legged just yeah, body type true. wise I'll it looks a lot what. like Alexei Ramirez. Alexei Ramirez is a lot quicker on the inner part of the plate than this guy is. This is how I think you can get this guy out is pitch him inside. He's got the long arms and he likes to extend it. Alexei Ramirez he loves a ball on the inner part of the plate. Wow. Corey He's Cooper dialed in. He's dialed in indeed. A half dozen strikeouts through the first three innings. And this game deadlocked at one. You may want to break away from the Cleveland cold this winter spend it out in uh, with the Indians in sunny Arizona. They have three exciting uh, travel plans. You can call 1-855-298-5444. All right so the Indians go back to work with the bats. Inning number four Carlos Santana will lead it off. Then it's Jason Kipnis followed by Lonnie Chisholm. Santana picked up an RBI with a ground out in the first, delivering the tribe's lone run. And Nick Tropiano misses outside ball one. Breaking ball in for a strike. Not sure how you would necessarily classify Nick Tropiano as this is our, our first time really getting a 
chance to see him in person but five straight fly ball outs. Well I see him. He's nothing overpowering. He throws about 90. Everything from, from his arm side. It seems like the ball tails away. His change up his fastball. I haven't seen him pitch the left handers in a lot. So I would uh, if I'm a hitter maybe cut the plate in half and look it for everything away. If he throws you inside I mean I haven't seen enough pitches inside to where you have to worry about the inner part of the plate from him. Everything seems to be away. Yeah. Of course they're just going to go through the lineup now for the second time so we'll see how they react if they you know make a change. They were two for eight their first time through the lineup. Trying to pull that pitch that's away, and he, 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 you can see Santana telling himself, "Don't try to pull that pitch. Stay with it. Go with it." Sometimes you tell yourself something, and you do just the opposite. Yeah, though. that's that's true. Eighth pitch of the at bat. Popped him up. Out goes Gonzalez, or actually uh, Petit, the third baseman, with the shift on. And he makes the grab for out number one. We go back to the studios for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Jimenez was not arguably he was the Indians best pitcher down the stretch a year ago but it has not been the same type of season for him for Baltimore this year he was knocked out of the starting rotation by the Indians in a game in Cleveland yeah right and he was moved to the bullpen right getting a swing and a miss Jason Way out in front of the off speed pitch down on the count now one and two. There's one pitch that went to the inside part of the plate, but let me see if it's a, it's a ball. But Kipnis swung at it and helped him out. Popped him up. Two down. Injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Left forearm contusion for Colin McHugh, the reason he left last night's ball game. The Astros also announcing that rookie George Springer will not play the rest of the season. He has officially been shut down. Interim manager Tom Lawless said that they they met. Team officials all got together. And they basically came to the conclusion that getting a few more at bats this season wasn't worth the risk of Springer having another setback. Now that doesn't mean he didn't take the hard. He said quote look I'm tough. It's tough for me. I'm, I'm a competitor. I want to play. But at the same time I understand yeah. you have to do things you don't necessarily want to do all the time in this game. <laughs> Never had this well, before so I can't really say if it's surprising. I don't know. It's a part of me that I use all the time so it's tough quadricep muscle. We're talking about, but I have to go with it and get healthy. You know, he's looking for the now. The Astros are looking at the big picture for down yeah. the road, you know, so they're going to make that decision. He hit 20 home runs. This is for Indians fans that maybe hadn't heard of Springer or seen him play. He hit 20 home runs and had 51 runs batted in in just 78 games played this yeah. year. I'm telling you, this guy has surprising power. He can steal bases. He's a great outfielder. He is an exciting player to watch. Yeah, he didn't start the year in the big leagues. He came up late and he still had 20 home runs in a hurry. Hit the bag. Oh, I thought it hit the bag. It's called a foul ball. I guess it did not. Must have hit in foul territory right in front of the bag. 
Well, it was awfully close. Either way, Singleton made the play, so if it was a fair ball, Chisenhall would have been out. It's, oh, it's yeah. there you go. You see how close it is. Yeah. I mean, that's right on the line. He's wearing out that side of the field right now. Yes, he is. And the seats. In the hole and a base hit, and Singleton may have given up on that just a tick too soon. And I can see his body language saying, ah, I should have gone for that one. Well, it's a tough call sometimes. You have to know where your second baseman is, and you have to read it off the bat. But the way he's pulling, I think, I guarantee he was thinking more of the line than he was the hole. You know, he figured maybe the way Chisnall was swinging the, at the bat, he was following him off into the seats, just missing the line. He could have pulled over a little bit more and went into the hole. But it's a base hit for Lonnie, two out base hit. Keeps the inning alive for Jan Gomes, who golfed one high in the air to left field his first time up. That base hit snapped a string of six in a row set down by Tropiano. And all six outs recorded were in the air. Gomes chases one in the other batter's box. 0 oh 2. There's his slider. Seems to go straight down. Upstairs with a heater. And then it's one and two. Minnesota leads Detroit one to nothing. Four innings in uh, Target Field in Minneapolis. Base hit left center field. That's in the gap. Could be trouble. Chisenhall on his way to third. Ball gets away from Grossman. Chisenhall will score. And the Indians take the lead on the error by the Astros left fielder who just simply. Should be a single and an error. But I'll tell you what, he came over to pick it up. Gomes put a nice swing on it. It's a breaking ball. He left up and he hits it to left field. Should have been a single. I can see where Chisenhall would have went to third base. But when he overruns the ball and then he boots it, that's an error. And then Fowler couldn't get it in time. So by the time they get it in, the Indians are going to score a run, take a two to one lead. So it's a single. And then the error by Grossman allows the run to score. Sometimes it's the absolute most basic fundamentals that can get away from you and be costly. Well, when you're facing guys and you're facing quality starting pitchers like a club, where you cannot afford to make mistakes and give a team extra outs or extra runs, or they should certainly take advantage of it. But this coming with two outs now, it should be first and third with two outs and Giambi coming to the plate. But the Indians now have that second run in. And you've got Gomes at second base. Remember last night it was an error that allowed the Indians to score their only right. run of the game. Yes, there was. Jason tried to hold up, but he went around. He's down on the count one and two. He was, yeah, he did. No question he went. We're going to miss. Boy, good fastball. Tropiano up and in. Threw it by him. Third strikeout for the right hander. But Yad Gomes with a base hit. And then on the bump, the Indians take the lead.
Corey Kluber piling up the strikeouts once again here tonight. He has struck out two in each of the first three innings here in the ballgame. Yeah. And he's recorded his last seven outs on 19 pitches, 17 of the 19 pitches for Steer Wright. And all of his strikeouts coming on fastballs except that one slider you just saw. No, he is commanding both sides of the plate. He's getting very efficient. He is locking it in. And let's see if that mistake in that one run keeps him locked in. Four, five, and six batters for Houston here in inning number four. It'll be Chris Carter, Marwin Gonzalez, and John Singleton. And Kluber delivers a first pitch strike. Nine out of 13 first pitch strikes for Corey Kluber. This is low and away to even the count. Indians go with a three man shift on the left side of the infield for the big slugger. Chris Carter. There's the equalizer right there. Took the sting out of the bat, hit it high in the air to center. Michael Bourne is under it. One away. What made Cleveland native Dante Whitner come home to play for the Browns? Find out this answer and more with the former Glenville and Ohio State star on Dante Whitner Revealed. Friday night at 7, before Indians Live, here on Sports Time Ohio. Marwin Gonzalez drove in Houston's lone run with a two out single in the first. Drag punt nice. and a good one. Nice punt. That is just picture perfect. With a right hand around the mound. Normally you like to try that drag bunt with the left hander who's falling off to the third base side. But you see Santana was lost. He didn't know what to do. If I go, should Kluber get it? Well, it was hard enough where Kluber couldn't get it. And Santana didn't know whether to get it, go for the bag or what. That was a perfect bunt. Wow, that's uh, you don't see that much anymore. It's fun to watch. That snaps a string of eight in a row, retired by Kluber. And it will bring up John Singleton, who was called out on called out on strikes his first time up. Well, that's a helpless feeling when you're out there. You don't know what to do. He makes he just laid down a perfect bunt. And that's why you always hear in order for that play to be successful you've got to bunt it by the pitcher. If you get it by the pitcher right then you put them in a position to where uh oh who goes where a lot of guys though when they try the drag bunt, they have a tendency to leave the box early and you know leave it they're running down the line first you have to make sure you bunt the ball first just like Gonzalez did there he laid down a perfect bunt and then took off. Right, because the bunt doesn't have to be perfectly up the line. No. Which, which is sort of a, a misnomer. You don't have to get out of the box. Just watch how he bunts the ball and he's in the box before he leaves. Boom. See where it was? Yep. And that pitch was up. It, it was a little bit away, but I mean, he waited in the box to put the ball on the ground before he started running out of the box. And to me, that's probably the most important thing if you're going to lay down a bunt as a left handed hitter. Just missed inside. Oh 
You know, I was thinking back to the former home of the Astros, the Astro Dome, which we got to the conversation last night about Astro Turf. Thinking right. back in the 70s when most of the ballparks had the Astro Turf, bunting was a little bit of a different game then because as long as you got the bunt down, it was going to get by roll. the pitcher's mouth. Yeah, know? it would roll for the most part on that stuff. You're right. You almost had to worry about bunting it too hard. Well, Good pitch. But in that on those uh, ballparks if you if you got the bunt down onto the dirt to deaden it just enough once it got out onto the Astro turf it, it would was roll. still roll and you know it was hard underneath all that Astro turf yeah. that's that was very hard I was almost like cement underneath or a hard cork underneath it. Three two pitch. Here in the fourth. Three two count with Max Stasi waiting on deck. Oh, awfully close. But it's called ball four. Second walk of the night. And two on for the Astros with one out. Take a look on our Nissan pitch tracker. It's inside and it's the comebacker, but it maybe didn't come back enough. Well, that's the pitch that we've said for years is the toughest one to get called for a pitcher the right inside corner because yep. that's where the umpire's got his head directly over that spot. Still, that looked pretty good. Well, what he did, it locked him out. He couldn't pull the trigger because I don't think he was looking there as a hitter. Max Stasi struck out swinging in the second. And it's outside ball. Upstairs, 2 0. Oh. Corey Kluber is a native of Texas, but he told me to get to his home. It's about a five and a half hour drive from it's a Houston. Big state. That's what he <laughs> That's said. His big, words exactly. Is that right? He said the exact I'm same thing. I'm telling you, it's a big <laughs> state, man. I've driven uh, past this, uh, through this state, and it'll take you all the day. Base hit the left, and the bases are loaded. So an infield bunt single got a three going. two walk on a borderline pitch and now yeah. a base hit to left and they're loaded up with one out. Well I'll tell you there's a, a, the pitch there he went falling behind so he wanted to go after him. He does and it's hit to left field and you're shallow so you're not going to score from second. But this all started with a perfect bunt base hit. They have him loaded now with one out so Corey's going to have to. Do a little bit of pitching here to get out of it. Alex Presley flied to left his only time up. And because of the short porch in left. Michael Brantley can play a little more shallow There's so fly ball to left no guarantee you get a run here. Right. Although Gonzalez I think he runs uh, average or a little bit better. But uh, I don't think he's a speedster. Can't get that inside corner called. And it's ball one.
Swing and a miss to even the count of one and one. Time the pitch finds the inside yeah. corner. That one had some come back to it. Started it in and uh, he took. Now he's got a chance to go for the punch out. Nice. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. Two down. Very nice. Pulled the string. Seven punch outs. Nice sequence here by Kluber. Going to start him off inside. Make him conscious of that. Then he goes to that cutter down and in. One and one. Good comeback fastball. Puts him away with the slider. Didn't waste any time. But that first pitch set that whole at bat up, making him think inside. Yeah. You got a runner on third base. So he got him looking on the inner part of the plate and got him away with a slider. Showed him a little bit of everything in that at bat as he moves ahead of Sam McDowell's 1967 season. Now Gaylord Perry's 1973 campaign directly in front of him. Swing and a miss. Gregorio Petit went hacking, struck out his first time up. Off the plate, one on one. Astros everywhere you look. The Astros, they scored their their one run in the first inning with two outs. Petit went hacking again, chased the same pitch he did for strike one, and now he finds himself in the hole one and two. It looked like a cutter to me. I don't know if that was a good slider at 91. That could have been the slider. That had to be a cutter. That was a hard cutter. He usually throws that at 87-88. That time Petit lays off. Yeah, go back to it. See if he'll chase. Slider here? Front door slider. I maybe. think it's slider. Let's go. Fastball. Bounce down. Looked like it got him in the chin or the chest. Yeah. Who did that happen to the other day that it got somebody down in the throat after they fall yeah, off? Who was that? Watch, he, he tops it, comes back down, right off his chest. Was that Adam Eaton of the White Sox? There you go. That's who very it was. good. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, it was. I couldn't think of it. Good call. It sure was. He went down. That hurt. Bases loaded, two outs. And the 2 2 pitch. On right back to the screen. Pitch cap climbing over 60 on the night. We're only in the fourth. 
Usually he's a picture of efficiency. Well, he was there for a while. Yeah, he got this into a good inning. groove. I'll tell you the bunt. I don't know if it did anything to him out there or not, but it certainly made him work. 27th pitch of the inning is strike three. Eighth strikeout of the night. The Astros leave them loaded. Kluber works out of trouble. 2 1 drive. Fox Sports 1 is your new home for baseball's National League Division and Championship Series. And it all begins October 3rd. Getting set now for the fifth inning, 2-1. Indians lead it. David Murphy going to lead off for the try. So Cleveland comes into tonight's game. With a mark of 31 and 43 on the road this year. Now, just to give you a comparison, the Astros are 31 and 44 on the road this year. Pretty dreadful. Now they've made up for it by the fact that the Indians are 45 and 30 at home. Right. But Rick, let me ask you: if you're Chris Antonin, do you Call on all of your organizational powers to study this and try and figure out why, or do you just chalk it up to well, it was just one of those years we didn't play well on the road. We'll we'll do better next year. Or do you need to find something that you can put your finger on so that it doesn't happen again? I'm sure they'll find something they can look at and they'll they'll crunch numbers and, and take a look at it and try and figure out why they didn't play as well on the road. Sometimes it's not as easy, but. They, they've been a different team. I think the come from behind wins you think at home all the walk yeah. off that's really special. I don't know if they'll see another year like that with the home runs and the different guys and everybody participating. To me that's just a mentality or a mindset. They haven't done that on the road. You had other guys going out on the road that weren't swinging the bats that well. You know that. Well yeah you look at the home and road splits for the hitters and for a lot of the hitters. You say, oh well, there's a big reason why they're not playing right. well. I on mean, the road. we we didn't score when we come out here, and I, I, good pitching travels anywhere. It doesn't matter whether you're at home or on the road. If you've got good pitching, there you should be able to win on the road. Murphy flies to center one away, but that pitching never started to take shape until the second half of the year, and they started playing better. Their first month, six weeks, they were terrible on the road. If you think about it. They're, and, and their their record in April we talked about. Yeah. And after that they picked it up. They have been playing around a 500 mark on the road for the last couple of months. So I mean yeah it's a little of both man. You, you can figure something out. You, you guys have to play better. When you get out on the road and it changes it, it is different every year for everybody. Some guy hits well. 
Last year we were a good road team. You know I think if you can play 500 on the road throughout the course of the year you're in pretty good shape if you take care of your home field. But if you remember right even last year they didn't get that road record up to 500 until that last stretch of the season where they kicked where they it in the so year. good in September. Yeah. yeah. The 0 2. Well let's look. At baseball. And look at the teams that play well on the road. Baltimore, 43 31. Detroit, 43 33. Kansas City, 42 32. You know, look at those teams. And then you have the Angels, 44 and 31. Those guys are doing their damage on the road. Seattle's the other team that's and, played well. And on Seattle the road. has played well. Those are all pretty close to, uh, you know, playoff teams. Well, I mean, hey, look. You don't have to be a baseball wizard to simply look at the home and road splits this year for the Indians and look at it and say, boy, if they just played 500 baseball right. on the road this year, this team would be right there in the thick of it. I mean, not that they're not now. They fall into the periphery of the playoff conversation now, but. Well, now they they just can't lose. For me, you just, they have four teams ahead of them, and they have to just go out and win every single game. And they, they did that last year. But this September has been a lot different than last September was. 2 0 pitch. Strike called. Well, hey, they had their chances. They had all you want is an opportunity. They had seven cracks at Detroit. And Detroit beat them six out of seven. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. They took it. They took it to them. A lot of those games were close. The Indians had opportunities, but at the end of the day, they went one and six, and that that has really crushed their their hopes. Jose Ramirez draws a two-out walk, and it will bring up Michael Brantley. Brought to you by your Toyota dealers. Carlos Santana with an RBI ground out in the first. Brought home Michael Bourne with the game's first run. Astros came right back and tied it in the bottom of the first. Two out RBI hit by Marwin Gonzalez. Stayed that way until the fourth. And then a whoopsie. An error by left fielder Robbie Grossman allowed Lonnie Chisnall to score. That's the difference in the game. Brent Strong pitching coach out to talk with Tropiano who had two outs. In the inning before he walked Jose Ramirez, Brent Strong saying, You don't walk the number two hitter to get to one of the best hitters in well, baseball. And, and you know what? They got him last inning with two outs, even though that mistake was made. They shouldn't have scored, but he's just going out there and reiterating, Let's go. You have a chance to get out of this inning. Yeah, this is going to be a good hit of your face and make your pitches. Rick, you said last night you can't remember a team shifting on Michael Brantley this year. Let's go downstairs to Katie with him. Katie, what'd you. Uh, hear from the Indians on this. Well Matt I asked Brad Mills who does the shifting for the Indians why somebody would do this to Michael Brantley and he said you know we always go by the numbers and they must show that Brantley does something specific against left handed pitchers or they're just shifting to try to force Brantley to change his approach. He said not many people shift Brantley because he's got such good bat control and the ability to hit all fields. When you do that though you better make sure your pitchers got very good command that night. Yeah I agree and I think they were just showing it. I mean right now with the double play they were over at three guys on the right side earlier in the game with the right hand. But uh, this time with the if there's two outs you got to have somebody at second base. For an easy flip if need be. But Michael he uses the whole field so it's it's tough. But he will roll over on a few balls to the to the right side. Off the glove. Ramirez goes for second. Throw was in the hit center him. field. Ramirez will go to third. And hit him. And he will be in there safely with two down. And you take another error. Yeah bad throw by Stasi. Wild pitch. You watch the ball ends up. It, it runs on Stasi as he's throwing. It looks like he's moving, and the ball hit Ramirez. Watch it in the.
Oh, it sure does. I'll be darn. They're going to so, rule that a pass ball. Pass ball and an E2. Even though the catcher Stasi had to really reach for the uh, other batter's box score. Brantley takes a strike. He's come back to run the count full. With two out here in the fifth. And the Indians leading it two to one. And Tropiano is about to make his 100th pitch of the night. Brantley drills it to deep right field. It is a oh. foul ball. Oh, oh man. And Michael was just sitting there staring. He knew it was going to be close. And I need to tell you, I think he thought it was going to be out of here. And then right at the last second, look at it. It's moving. It's moving. It is about a raise the pole. My no. goodness. Oh. I mean, that's you can deep. see the shadow of the ball on the foul pole, How but about it, didn't, that? it didn't touch it. That oh. was about as close as you can come. To hitting a home run without wow. it hitting the pole. How about a little deflection, please? Lifts it to left field. Grossman makes the catch. Trumpiano escapes by the hair of his chinny chin chin. It stays two to one Cleveland middle of the fifth. Jose Altuve will be coming up second here in the inning before the ball game. Craig Biggio, who is the Astros' single season hits leader, and the man Altuve is chasing, talked about Jose running down his record. He's been fighting the odds his whole life. I mean, he's five foot six, and you know everybody's like, "You're too small. You're too small to play." And he keeps proving everybody wrong. And now he's fighting for a batting title and have a chance. And he's going to end up with 215, 220 hits. And you know he deserves all the all the accolades he gets from it. So I mean, he's but he's worked hard from it, and he's never taken no. So he's uh, I'm happy to watch him. I'm glad he's on our team, and uh, he'll be he'll be fun to watch for years to come. And that's Craig Biggio, who's one of the Astros' all-time greats.
Biggio knows what it's like to be told, I'm sure, oh, you're boy. too small, you're not this, you're not that. You know, it just goes to show you uh, anybody could do it. You have to be consistent. You've got to work hard. And this guy, he's amazing because he gets the barrel of the bat to the baseball. He can, he can hit. He goes up there to hit. He doesn't take anything. I'm sure he's got a small strike zone, but he's not trying to walk. You don't get 200 hits taking walks. He goes up there hacking. Altuve waits on deck as Robbie Grossman leads off. And Grossman is punched out. That's nine strikeouts for Corey Kluber. One down here in the fifth. All right. Katie has more on Corey Kluber facing Jose Altuve. Well, Matt Kluber said in regards to facing a guy like Altuve, he's got that ability to turn a single into a double, a double into a triple. He's got exceptional plate coverage, and he's smart. You can tell he knows himself and what he's trying to do each time he steps up to the plate. So Kluber said the biggest key in facing him is you have to mix both pitches and location. You cannot throw him the same thing twice. Well, that makes a lot of sense. You just yeah. you better not throw him anything close to the plate first pitch because he's swinging. I'm at telling you, he he finds a way to get the bat to the ball. And and when she says he turns singles into doubles, yeah, because he could steal a base. So a single is a double 52 yeah. times, or yeah. a, a few of those times. I'm sure second goes into a double goes into a triple. The way he can run. Chisenhall. Brantley hustling over. In the second is Altuve. Well, that ties the record. 209. The crowd on their feet. Two hundred ten now. There it is. Yeah, he's right when Bejo said. Uh, 220 hits. He's not. He's not done yet. It's a breaking ball. And it speeds up his bat. It was down, and he gets it past Chisenhall at third. So the hit that breaks the the record is uh, 210. And there's Bijo. A nice hand from the crowd here at Minute Maid Park. By the way, Craig Biggio missed by becoming the first Astros player to make it into the Hall of Fame by two votes. Two votes. Yeah, how about that? Dexter Fowler has struck out twice tonight. He takes a called strike. Well, there's the tying run at second base, and now Kluber getting tough. And Fowler's. He's strolling Not around. Happy. Well, a heater inside and a slider away. He may not be happy, but then that Kluber, both sides of the plate. Missed by much there, one and two. Just a bit high. Oh boy. Oh boy. Maybe a half a ball with time. Wow, I would have been swinging at that. Swings at the breaking ball. And Kittness will throw him out. 
two down as Altuve moves over to third. And that will bring up Chris Carter. Carter for one for two. Single in his first at bat. Lined out to center in his second. Single to left in the first, fly to center in the fourth. Swing and a miss. That slider has such good tilt, is the word. It just. Well, oh, right handers, man. I, I, they must be cringing when they go into the batter's box and have to try and hit that pitch because you know it's in the back of their mind. It's when am I going to get it? Yeah. Lays off. Two and two. Saying the same thing, knowing it was close. It's a fastball. It's off the outside edge. There's Gomes's glove. He tries to throw that comebacker, and awfully close. Just a little bit off the outside edge. And the payoff pitch, swing and a miss. Kluber with his tenth strikeout of the night. He has struck out two. In every inning of the ball game, and the Indians lead it two to one.
Time now for our AT&T fan photo of the game. Don't forget you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have one of your pictures shown during our telecast this year. It's all courtesy of AT&T. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Cleveland Clinic Darren Downs coming on now for Houston left hander. He'll be facing the four five and six hitters for the Indians here in inning number six. Forty fourth time Downs has appeared in a game he's been he's done a nice job against left handed hitters. Hitting just 197, 13 for 66. By the way, Corey Kluber with that 10th strikeout in the fifth inning. It's his ninth game this year with 10 or more strikeouts. It's the most for an Indians pitcher since Sam McDowell had 10 of those in 1970. Now uh, you just take a look and watch the. Different locations, the different pitches. Oh, he's gone about it, but boy, it's it's game after game after game. 240 punches. Something to watch, boy. We've seen Corey Kluber do something this year that hasn't happened in 44 years. Yeah. For the Indians, Carlos Santana to lead off. So Trapiano for his second start. He goes five innings again. Give up four hits, two runs, just the one earned run. Swing and a miss. It's one and one. Piano talking with McHugh, Colin McHugh, who started last night's game and had to leave early because of the contusion to his left form. You can see it's bandaged up there. But good news there, nothing was broken. He took a vicious line drive back up the middle. Downstairs, two and one. Now the Washington Nationals have wrapped up the National League East and the Baltimore Orioles are three outs away from wrapping up the American League East. Oh yeah that's a done deal eight to two there in Baltimore. Nationals shut out the Braves tonight three to nothing. It's a bit of sweet revenge for Washington. I'm sure they would have liked to have clinched at home. But if there was one place they wanted oh, to clinch yeah. it otherwise it was in Atlanta because the Braves they have been a pain in their side. They couldn't beat them earlier in the year. It's almost triple satisfaction. They clinch they do it in Atlanta. And they might have dealt the Braves a, a serious blow oh, yeah. to their possible playoff that aspirations. Them, what a game under 500 yeah. now. Yeah. Here in Atlanta. Santana did he go after it and Peel he did not and Carlos has a leadoff walk. Time for a Mazda game break. Let's go back to Al Pulaski who has the latest on the Tigers tonight. Thanks, Al. In Minnesota, they've been waiting for that Ricky Nolasco to show up. Kipnis a swing and a foul back. White Sox lead the Royals 4 3. Boy, Kansas City had a major comeback win last night over Chicago. Boy, they did. Scored one in the seventh, one in the eighth, two in the ninth. Kipnis trying to bunt, but bunts it over toward the on deck circle. Jason looks lost up there, doesn't he? Yeah, Rick. I don't know if it's if it's just simply a, a, a confidence where you know he's get doubting himself, second guessing himself. You now sometimes you get into those ruts, and, and you've been through it, obviously. It snowballs it. Yeah, it gets tough to get out of them. 
Well, just the first swing, and then he tried to bunt, and I'm sure that was on his own. That's Samuel Deduno, who we saw last night getting loose. Down back. Swing and a miss, strikes him out. One away. They'll bring up Lonnie Chisenhall. Lonnie with a single and scored the go ahead run on the fourth, and out comes Brett Strong, the pitching coach. Well, Gomes, the only right handed hitter in this lineup for the Indians. It's low and away ball one. That's called a strike, but it sure didn't look like one. One and one looked very similar to the previous pitch. Well, not how he caught it. it. It looked weird how he caught it, maybe. Let's see. The same spot as the first one, yeah. roughly. Two and one. Fly ball, center field, Dexter Fowler. He's got it, two down. And we'll see what Tom Wallace does here with the Duno up in the pen. It looks like he'll stay with Darren Downs and let him face Gomes. Tom Wallace is one of those guys that seems like he's been around forever. And he's done a lot of the dirty work in various jobs throughout the Astros organization. Last year at Double A Corpus Christi, he was the infield coach. Before that, he was a roving infield instructor. He's been an interim manager before in the minor league level. And uh, also, he served as manager, coach, and instructor. In the minor leagues for the Angels, the Mets, the Cardinals, the Padres, the Orioles. <laughs> He's paid his dues. In yeah. other words. He knows a lot of teams. He even spent a year working uh, in the office of the commissioner. Working under Bob Watson, a former Astro at that time. He's one of those guys that every organization needs. You need a good old school baseball guy who's been throughout, done everything in the organization. Yeah. He kind of gives them the pulse of what's going on at A ball, double A. He knows everybody throughout the system, I'm sure. Probably knows a lot of these young players. I'm sure he does. Instructed them on their way to the big leagues. Now the 1 1 pitch. Oh, that's rocketed. Deep left field. 
Jan Gomes with his 19th home run of the year, a two out, two run shot just over the yellow line and left. And it's now a four to one Indians lead. And that leaves the manager open to second guessing all night long. Even Gomes thought he was waiting. He thought they were going to come get the left hand or the right hander out of the bullpen to face him. They never did. They let down Stan to face him and he takes him deep. That short porch in left field. He got one down in Gomes' wheelhouse. And that was just a blind drive and it made it over by a row, maybe two rows into the seats and that's a nice piece of insurance right there. Now we're going to get a pinch hitter as Jesus Aguilar will bat for Jason Giambi. And the Astros will even shift for a guy who has just a handful of at bats. Aguilar batting for just the 27th time this year. He's only accumulated four hits. Out of his uh, 26 at bats. Only 16 times as he put the ball in play. But they've got those 16 dots that must be accumulated over there <laughs> on the left side. Though we've seen him go to right field a number yes, of times. Yes, yes, we have. Just he hasn't uh, had consistent playing time at this level. No, and, you know, you, it's tough to get a book on somebody like that. Strike three called, and the inning is over. Jan Gomes clears the 19 foot wall and left, and the Indians lead it four to one. Corey Kluber now with 240 strikeouts on the year. Not since Sam McDowell in 1970 as an Indian punched out this many batters. 
Yeah, and then a right hander that was Louis Dion in the year that he had in 68. Well, he has two more starts remaining. So you never know what could happen with this guy. Next start will be Sunday in Minnesota. Strike call to Marwin Gonzalez, who is two for two on the night, an RBI single in the first, a drag bunt single in the fourth that led to a bases loaded situation, and then Corey struck out two hitters to get out of the jam. Now armed with a four to one lead, though. Swing and a miss. It's 0 and 2. At least he's got finally a little breathing room, which Indian starting pitchers have not had much of late. Now, in the last start that the, for, for Corey, they scored him early. You remember, and he was able to just breeze through that start. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. Give him 11 on the night. This is his 17th swing and miss on the night. Look at that ball just took off. That was not even close. But he gets the swing. And he moves past Bob Feller now for 12th. This is single season strikeouts in Indians history. Bob's uh, on that list a few times among the top 10. Swing and a miss. John Singleton called out on strikes in the first. He drew a walk on a borderline pitch in the fourth. One of two walks allowed by Kluber tonight. Good pitch. There's a slider. And it's now one and two. Ball up and in. Two two locked him up. The express low and away, and that's a dozen K's for Kluber, and once again, two in every inning tonight. Well, the Baltimore Orioles have wrapped up the American League's Eastern Division title, their first since 97. And so if you look at the American League playoff picture, Baltimore's in. The Angels are going to clinch in the, within the week. The uh, Central Division still to be decided. At the moment, the Tigers closing in. I should say the Twins are closing in on a shutout win over Detroit, maybe. And uh, Kansas City is losing 4 3, but they're only in the fifth or sixth inning in Kansas City. Still a long way to go. And that was. Low and away. Ball one evens the count on Max Stasi, who's one for one, or one for two tonight with a single and a strikeout. To left, Brantley. Astros go one, two, three. Corey Kluber has been mowing them down. He has fanned two in each of the first six innings tonight.
Well, guarantee uh, postseason tickets with the Tri Playoff Payoff Program by placing a deposit on next year's tickets. Fans can gain priority access to this year's postseason tickets. Visit Indians.com for the details. Jorge De Leon coming on now for Houston. Right hander making just his third appearance on the year. He was touched for three earned runs in just one third of an inning last Friday in Anaheim. He had uh, five saves in a 301 ERA in 46 games this year between double A and triple A. So he'll be facing David Murphy, Michael Bourne, and Jose Ramirez. Murphy is 0 for 2. He is fly to left and he is fly to center. Murphy went too far in a count one and one. Murphy cuts and misses. Falls behind one ball and two strikes. Slap to left, but right there is Grossman. Looking back on Sunday's win over the Saints and getting the keys to the game against the Ravens. That Sunday strategy with Jim Donovan, Doug Deacon, and Nathan Segura, presented by Mazda Wednesday after Indians Live on Sports Time Ohio. Bornless one eleven. Racing back is Grossman onto the track two down. So I thought you'd find this interesting. The playing surface here at Minute Maid Park. Is I don't know if I can even say this. It's called Platinum TE Haspalum Grass. It is constructed to USGA golf green specifications. No kidding. Yeah. Think you would have liked to play it on something like that? Yeah. <laughs> Get a nice true roll to it, huh? Well, still, you know, they have to open that roof for this stuff to grow. A lot like Arizona does. Oh, that's hit hard. Deep that's center. A, that's going to be. Foul racing into the gap. Oh, oh did he make the catch? Oh, yes, man. he did. Oh, he flat out robbed Jose Ramirez. This is a great athletic play by Fowler. Who's always been a tremendous athlete in center field. 
Time now for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is home. Minute Maid Park here in Houston, Texas. And a look in from our Panini's overstuffed cam. Crowd of 18,301 announced here tonight. Corey Kluber, a half dozen strikeouts, and half of them have been looking. Admiring. Yeah, he, he's been, again, Corey Kluber. His. Career high and season high, 13 strikeouts. He's one away from that, but uh, again, he ended up walking the first guy of the game and then uh, pretty much locked it in from that point on, although he did give up a couple of two out hits in the first. One two pitch a little bit high. His 100th pitch of the night to left field Brantley goes back on to the track one away. There you go, 68% strikes again. Boy, it seems like every time this year he goes out between 65 and 70%, sometimes over 70, yeah. you know, a few times under 65, but boy, so consistent. Last time out, 83 of his 110 pitches were strikes. Start before that, 72 out of 104.
swing and a miss by Gregorio Petit. Just looking at the starts he's made this year. Of the starts he's made in which he has thrown at least 100 pitches, 66 strikes is the fewest number of strikes he's thrown, except all the way back to the second start of the year when he only made 65 strikes out of 105 pitches. That's how consistently good he has been this year as far as pounding the zone. Pitch after pitch after pitch. Well, that's an excellent pitch right there, but Petit gets enough of it to bloop it in front of Michael Bourne in center field. Get the hit number six now. Well, you know what, Rick? It's nice to know JD Martinez doesn't just beat up on the Cleveland Indians. Oh, you okay? You heard about he it? He just hit a three-run homer in the ninth inning with two outs. With two outs to overcome a two-to-nothing deficit in Minnesota. Wow, what a year he has had. That's another. How many? Would he have seven ninth-inning home runs this year? And they get eight. I think when we well, when he did that in Cleveland, I think we said seven. I think that's eight now. Yeah. Robbie Grossman has struck out twice tonight. White Sox and Royals are now tied four four. In Kansas City. Strike is called. It's 0 2. I'm a little surprised, Rick, with as many strikes as he's thrown, as many strikeouts as he had, that we haven't seen more Astros hitters swinging early and early. trying to put the ball in play early in the count. I agree. When you're a hitter, uh, usually that's when you see Corey have those 7 8. 10 pitch innings. 13th strikeout equals his career high that he set back on May the 4th in a game against the White Sox. And now here is Jose Altuve, who picked up his 210th hit of the season his last time up that equaled the franchise record. And that is Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. The record he tied belongs to the man on your left, Craig Biggio. Altuve looking to own the record outright. He'll be swinging. Right back up the middle and it's through. Didn't take him long. Did another multi hit game. The Astros single season all time hit leader. The ball, the bat. They will be placed in safekeeping. He wastes no time. Four at bats. He's seen six pitches. There you go. Hey, Craig Biggio. Well, as Biggio said, he says, hey, records are made to be broken. And, you know, he had the opportunity to watch this young man do it. He's, he's had some kind of special year when it comes to swinging the bat. Boy, he, he gets the bat, the barrel of the bat to the baseball with the best of them. Well, and that's the thing. I went looking, Rick, you know, because sometimes guys will have a year like, wow, where did that come from? Kind of out of nowhere. Without Tuve, though, if you look at his track record, granted, it's the minor leagues. But as he made his trek through the or, uh, Astros organization, first year he hit 343 in rookie ball. 284, 324, 308, 408, 361, then on to the big leagues. So he's been a good hitter everywhere he's been. It's just something obviously that comes naturally to him. All he had to overcome was the fact that he's five foot six 
And probably people told him, yeah, you're probably too small to play in the big leagues. He just didn't listen. Dexter Fowler fouls it off. It's funny though, you've got Dexter Fowler at the plate who's six foot four. <laughs> Jose Altuve down at first at five foot six. Yeah. That's the good thing about the game of baseball. It doesn't matter how you don't have to be a specimen. You can play this game. Short, tall, it doesn't matter. In there for a called strike. And it's 0 2. Yeah, you could be Ken Griffey Jr. or you could be John Crook. But if you can put the bat on the ball, right. if you can field your position, there's a place for you. It comes all shapes and sizes. Now the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Corey Kluber with a new career high. 14 strikeouts. Oh, what a year he has had. What a night he has had. He struck out two in every inning he has pitched. All seven here tonight. 4-1 Cleveland. not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Corey Kluber a career high 14 strikeouts you've got to go back to 1998. Last time an Indians pitcher punched out that many, and that was Bartolo Colon in Toronto. Yeah, what a night. And I would imagine he's done. He's right around 108, 110 pitches. Tell you, if they think it's going to get any easier tomorrow, we're used and it's not because he's talking to Carrasco right now. There's a guy that can come right at you with the same kind of stuff. Brantley pops one up. How out of play.
Oh, that one took off on him. Brantley takes a breaking ball down low. Full count. going on down in St. Petersburg tonight. It's Eric Jeter's final game at the drop has turned into a complete fiasco. Bouncing ball to first off the glove of Singleton. Altuve recovers and throws him out. How about that play? Nifty work by Altuve who stayed with it after Singleton kind of had it deflect. Similar to the play was the last night when Chisinau had to go off his glove. Ramirez. Ramirez picked it up. Yeah, right. He was uh, awake and heads up, and the pitcher was over there as well. How was, often do you see a 3 4 3 put up? Yeah. Uh, not too often, that's true. Pitcher was in spot, though. He was there because even though Singleton did touch it, De Leon got over there and was in position. So it's G you know, they had the big farewell for Jeter, the send off. Here you go, Derek. Thanks for the memories. Great seeing you down here in Tampa. Then they hit him during the game. <laughs> He's hit by a pitch, and there's been a lot of other shenanigans, I suppose, that have gone on. Joe West is involved. He's thrown out, I think, half the Yankees team. <laughs> Girardi, oh Girardi's been tossed. Let's see if I can figure out who else has been thrown out of the game. David Phelps was injected by the Yankees. Santana smokes it in the right field. And a one out single here in the eighth. In game box score brought to you by Hyundai. John Gomes with a big two run homer, giving Corey Kluber some cushion here tonight. That took it from a two to one game to a four to one Indians lead. So Joe Girardi, David Phelps, and Tony Pena were all ejected for the Yankees. Crazy. Did, uh, did they say who hit uh, Jeter? Um, Just out of curiosity. Steve Geltz? Never heard of him. Me either. Bounced in the dirt. Joe Joe Madden went to the mound and took him out though after he hit Jeter. Probably a good move. Yeah. Girardi was upset because of the warning. And that's, you know, hey, you hit one of yeah, our guys, at least give happens. us a chance, right? Always happens like that. So what they came back and they hit one of their guys, so that's why Girardi was probably thrown out, I take it. No, I think he was throwing out just for chirping. 
He wouldn't let it because he was mad that both both benches were warm before they had an opportunity maybe to retaliate. I don't know. Just, you know, you try to have a nice little party for somebody, nice little going away party, and the next thing you know, it yeah, gets right. out of hand. <laughs> You've been to a few of those, I take it. <laughs> like Avila's pitch running. Jason Kipnis gets the knock. One for four on the night. Milani Chisinau one for three in the evening. He singled with two outs in that fourth inning. And then Jan Gomes delivered a, a base hit to left center field. And on the play, Bobby Grossman overran the baseball and not allowed Lonnie to come all the way around and score. Yeah, at that time it was uh, it looked like a big run. Yeah, it was two, to, a one. two to one lead until Gomes uh, took him deep back in the sixth. He left the left hander out there. Callaway calling down with the bullpen. I see Brian Shaw up getting loose. Maybe he wants somebody else to get warm as well. Maybe thinking uh, should the Indians open this up, get a bigger lead. Maybe uh -huh. you don't know, pitch Shaw. I mean Brian's worked a ton of games this year. Out of play. That's by Chisholm. Hall. Foul out of play to the left. The same kind of a bat he had yeah, earlier. It sure is. He ended up getting that base hit in the hole between first mm -hmm. and second after he was playing with the line. He fouled a few into the seats. Drilled down the right field line, but that's going to hook foul. Didn't have the distance, but no problem for Lonnie. It's another opportunity with a 3 2 count. Remember also in this game, Michael Brantley in the fifth inning hit a ball down the right field line, and you could see the shadow of the ball pass by the foul pole. You, you'd have been lucky to be able to slide a piece of paper between the ball and the foul pole. That's how close it came. Being a home run for Michael. Chisinau goes down swinging. Two down. This was the one I'm talking about. In case you missed it, watch if we can slow it down. Watch how close. Watch the ball. Watch the shadow. 
Yeah. Right there. I mean, it's amazing how close that was. Put a dollar bill between that yeah. if you're lucky. And somehow it did not draw paint. And Michael would have had his 20th home run of the year. Instead, he'll have to wait. Two on, two out. Jan Gomes has had a big night. Two hits, a two run homer. Going away, ball one. Nineteen foot wall in left field, similar to that of the wall in Cleveland, and Gomes cleared it. A Line home drive. Run. There was a liner. Difference being in Cleveland, the wall's not quite that close. Beyond Gomes, like Michael Brantley, now just one homer shy of that 20 home run mark for the year. Hard shortstop Gonzalez throws him out, and we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Four-one Cleveland. Tonight that he was just dealing. He had a career high 14 strikeouts in his seven innings. He had two strikeouts in every inning he pitched. And I mean he was just in total control with everything. The cutter, the slider, the fastball. He was dealing. It made it look easy and then a, a headache to the Houston Astros, but he was fun to watch. 200 and 44 strikeouts on the season for Corey Kluber. Gave up six hits, just the one run he did walk to. There's a lot of swings and misses wow. there. Well, so based on our math, we'll see him again Sunday in Minnesota. Right. And then that should put him in line to start maybe the series finale opener. Either that Friday, yes, in, uh, against Tampa. Tampa, yeah. So Brian Shaw, wow, 75th appearance of the year. He's had a terrific season. Uh, Mike Avilas at uh, second, Justice Sellers at third. He's had a couple of rough outings. Maybe that's an understatement, but Terry Francona has said, look, this guy, you know, you count on him every day. He shows up every day ready to pitch, never says no, never comes in and says, hey, I could use a day off. You 
every manager kills for guys like that in your bullpen. You're going to give it up. The, the, I'll tell you what, the bullpen has been so good for this team all year. They have picked them up by the bootstraps game after game after game. You're going to have a couple hiccups. Unfortunately, they ended up coming in that Detroit series in back to back games. <laughs> Uh, he, he has been he, he has been very very good for the Indians this year. Breaking ball misses. Took off on the fastball. Full count. Now, granted, I, I do think, though, that there's a good news, bad news element to Brian Shaw as a as a competitor. The good news is he'll take the ball every day. He won't complain. The bad news is he may take the ball. When he's out of gas, and that's got to be, that's where the manager and the pitching coach well, have to happens. really be on top that, of it. That's true. That is true. They they would have to monitor that, and you know, there's times when you have to maybe bypass it. We'll see. But if he says he's healthy, and you ask him, it, it has to be a gut. These guys know him better. Callaway would know him better than anybody, and Terry's got to make that call. Look, you and I looked at this bullpen early in the season, said. Whew. These guys not might, might not make it through the season because they when were they start, leaning on them so heavily. Right. It, it came early and often. So really the job that Terry and Mickey and the staff Kevin Cash all these guys have done to keep these guys fresh to use them as much as they've used them but not abuse them. Well it's really the, the really bottom well line done. it comes down to they play so many close games because offensively. The 75 games that they played three runs or less you're in a lot of games so. The, you're using your best three a lot. And I mean, these guys between Shaw and, and Allen, Zepchinski, those guys were up there in the league all year long. Yeah. But you know, when you play close games, you have to do it. So eventually, they're going to get gassed. But man, the, the finish line is in sight. You, you can't not pitch them now. Brian Shaw leads the league in appearances with 75. His teammate Cody Allen is tied for second with 71. Right. The guy who was up there for much of the season was Mark Sipchinski. But then don't don't and discount Atchison. Yeah, he's, he's been out there a boatload of times. He's one behind Zipchinski now. There you go. So that's that's what we're talking about. And you know you can protect of any of those guys you're talking about. You can protect Allen for the most part. As a closer, because there's times where you don't have to pitch him if you don't have that lead going in that ninth inning. So they chopped it short. Ramirez will step on the back, throw it at first. Oh, a safe call. It was close, but Gonzalez hustling beats it out. One away. Time for another Mazda game break. Back to the studios. Here's Al. Talk about leaking oil and having uh, some issues. That bullpen with the Tigers, they have some issues. Joe Nathan is scary. By Shaw, it's Bob right back. Yeah. 
So the door is open again for Kansas City to close the gap to a half game on the Tigers. If the Royals can. Well, they have a 5 4 lead now. The Royals do. Even though that scoreboard says it's 4 4, that's 5 4. One and two the count. Well, if the Royals can hang on, then they will trim the Tigers' lead to a half game. Fouled right back. Down and in. Big game for Milwaukee over in the National League. They're in uh, St. Louis, and at last check it was tied 2 2. They're going to extra innings. But Milwaukee desperate for a win. Yeah. St. Louis, they they started the night with a three and a half game cushion over Pittsburgh. Pirates have already won, but if Milwaukee loses, they'll fall two and a half back in that wild card chase. Boy, Brian Shaw throwing a lot of pitches here in the inning. And the 3 2. He's fouled out of play. Singleton with two strikeouts and a walk tonight. And again, a 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He goes down swinging for the third time tonight. Two down. And so therein lies the rub with John Singleton. He's a young player. He's got tremendous promise. But like so many young players, a lot of swings and misses. Is there Wendy slow motion replay on the cutter? And you, you see, it, it's everything becomes pole happy. You want to hit the ball out of the ballpark, you know? Make contact, shorten it up. If you're strong enough, the ball will fly. Nothing wrong with a double. Single, keep it going. Yeah, I mean, you move it along. The Royals have struck out, or the Royals, I, I should say, the Astros have struck out 15 times tonight. Then again, there's Corey Clover. There's what you were looking for. Just base hit, short strokes. Two out single keeps the inning alive. And then we'll bring up Alex Presley, who was 0 for 3 on the night. Cutter off the end of the bat into center field. Astros on the night two for eight with a runner in scoring position. Their big moment came in the fourth when they loaded the bases with one out. And then Corey Kluber struck out this guy, Alex Presley. And then struck out Gregorio Petit to end the inning. But it was the strikeout of Presley that was really impressive. I believe it was a three pitch at bat. But he showed him a little bit of everything. Fastball cutter, 
Slider put him away. Now Shaw needs to put Presley away to get out of the inning. We saw Cody Allen getting loose. Tells you how bad Terry wants this game. If he has to go to Cody Allen here in the eighth to get the last out, he will. I think this is Shaw's final opportunity to get out of the inning. Good pitch, and it's one and two. One ball, two strike count with two on two out here in the bottom of the eighth, and the tribe leading it four to one. And Presley with a foul ball. Bounced it in there, two and two. 25 pitch inning for Brian Shaw. So he's averaged five pitches to every batter that he's faced. Fair ball, Brantley cuts it off. One run will score. Alex Presley with a two out RBI single makes it a four to two ball game. Max Stasi stopped at second base. Well, he's going to slice it down the other way. That was on the outside part of the plate. It was elevated, it was about belt high. And in that sure left field porch, you really can't go from first to third out there, although they could score with two outs, so it's a four to two game. And Terry Francona is going to stay with Shaw. No, he's not. He's going to get a pinch hitter, and now he's going to make his move. Once they announced the pinch hitter, he decided he's going to go to his closer. So Brian Shaw. Cannot get the third out here in the eighth inning. We've got a timeout 4 2, please.
Total Car Care is coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. We are in the bottom of the eighth. The Indians' lead is four to two. The Astros have two on with two out. A frustrated Brian Shaw unable to get out of the eighth inning. Cody Allen will be called upon to try to get the last out here and then close it out in the ninth. For Cody Allen, this will be his 72nd appearance of the year. Looking for his 21st save with a 2.10 ERA on the year. He'll be facing the pinch hitter, left handed batter Jason Castro. And the Astros also have a pinch runner into the ball game. Jake Marisnik has taken over at second base for Max Stasi. Okay. So we are ready to roll here, now. We are ready to roll. Tying runs on base. Ball one. <laughs> to left field. Brantley moving back on the track makes the catch to end the inning. Astros get a run in. They leave two stranded. Brantley makes a big play here and will go to the ninth for two Cleveland. All right, so stay tuned for Indians Live, presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care, coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. Good pitcher for the Astros. After Jorge De Leon went two innings of scoreless relief. Jake Buchanan will pitch tonight. And Castro stays in the game behind the plate. And Matt Dominguez takes over third. JB Shuck will bat for Jesus Aguilar. Nationally. 
This game is uh, from that seventh inning on has really hit the brakes, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you just look back on it, Nick Tropiano went five innings. He had to throw 100 pitches in five innings. Right. Corey Kluber struck out 14 batters in his seven innings. He went 110 pitches on the night. But, uh, yeah, that 25 and about 30 pitch eighth inning for the Indians didn't help matters. J.B. Shuck bouncer to first Singleton lost his footing, but he gets up to make the play one away. Pretty good play. The ball was hit hard. Singleton though goes over there and that little side shuffle and he was almost like a goalie. He's trying to keep that ball in front of him. He ends up making the catch. The feet slide away, but he gets up and goes unassisted. David Murphy looks at a ball down low. He is 0 for 3. He has flied out to left field twice, once to center field. Murphy sends one to left. Grossman has it two away. Top of the order Michael Bourne he is one for four tonight. Same two teams tomorrow night same game time. Right here on sports time Ohio. And then again on Thursday to wrap up the series. Carlos Carrasco tomorrow night against Brett Oberhoser, the left hander. Inside the born one and one. Former Astro and his son with him before the game down on the field during batting practice. One two pitch. Swing and a miss. And the inning is over. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. 4 2 Cleveland.
Archer looking back. Indians got a total of uh, three out of their four runs with two outs in the ball game, benefiting also from the Astros' shoddy defensive play. They didn't contain Altuve, but they've been able to hold the Astros at bay. Altuve with two more hits tonight. Yeah, I don't know if you can control him. He's going to get his hits no matter who's pitching. Nobody's contained I'll him. I'll tell you what, I figured Corey would shut him down tonight, but that kid in two swings got two hits, breaks the record here in Houston. He is something to watch. All right, Cody Allen got the last out of the eighth. He needs three more to nail down the save and a win for Cleveland. And on top of the order for Houston, Robbie Grossman 0 for 3. He has struck out three consecutive times. Count quickly 0 and 2. He swings and misses and Gomes will have to flip it the first one away. That's the 16th strikeout for Indians pitchers here tonight. You're going to see him chase it. That's the good thing about it. Corey, uh, Cody with that good curveball that he can get people to swing and miss that thing. Nasty bite to it. Jose Altuve to the plate. He has singled and doubled his last two times up. Swings at the first pitch Shocker. yet again. <laughs> I love it though. When you 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 want to hit, you want to see this guy. He is ready from the very first pitch he sees. Good breaking ball. And Altuve falls behind 0 2. When Cody has this pitch here, Matt, you know he's yeah. lethal. Yep. That's he a is difference lethal. maker. It sure is. To go with that fastball, it's uh, he's awfully tough. Swing and a miss. He got him to chase one in the dirt. Altuve says he got a piece no, of it. No, he's trying to. Angel keep Hernandez him. says, I'm not buying. No, he's not buying. It's right. You go ahead and try. It sounded like it tipped, but it didn't. It hit the dirt and it goes right into the glove. He didn't come close. And there you go. It didn't throw him a strike. So, Dexter Fowler is the last hope for Houston. He has struck out three times tonight. See, that's 17 strikeouts. It's got to be close this year for a nine inning game, I would think, for this pitching staff. Oh, right back, got a big chunk of Gomes' mask, but he's all right. Yeah, they passed it. It's 15 strikeouts is the high for a nine inning game. They have 17 tonight. So there you go by two. Swing and a foul right back. The Astros have actually out hit the Indians nine to seven. But the Indians lead it four to two. Yeah, the Astros have left ten on base. One two pitch up by Seems at eye level. High fastball. If he comes back with, the, with his good breaking ball he's throwing tonight. He 
Jake tried to uh, run it in on him, and Fowler able to foul it off. And that's how you can pitch it because, as you mentioned, he's a big, tall guy, six foot four. He likes to extend the arm, so he was running that heater in on his fist. He barely got a piece of it. Now the 2 2. High fly ball to right field. And the Indians four game losing streak is over. They prevail by a final score of.